Welcome to episode 58 of Communicast, a communication skills podcast. I'm Scott D'Amico, president of Communispawn, a global communication skills training organization. Take care of people and people will take care of you. Outstanding advice from my guest this episode, Matt Krasnov. Matt is a producing branch manager for the Krasnov Mortgage Team at First Federal Bank. In this episode, we delve into the core of authenticity, the significance of articulating your why, and the transformative power of genuine care. I hope you enjoy. Matt, appreciate you taking some time to sit down and chat. Thanks for having me, man. I mean, to be here on your show is one of the biggest achievements in my career, brother. I don't know what, if that says something about me or maybe something bad about your career. I'm not really sure about that one. <laughs> I'm honored though, man. I really, yeah. uh, no, so, no, I, I really was actually, to be honest with you, I was also concerned I wasn't going to make it on time. I think that's why my uh, wife brought me breakfast here. Um, like I told you, you know, as soon as I sat down, it, it, she sees me rushing all over the place. I'm like, I got to get on. I got to get on. I ran and brushed my teeth because I didn't want you to smell my breath. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yes. We have we have a bunch of stuff to talk about today. But before right. we jump into that, why don't you maybe tell the listeners a little bit about you, your journey and the work that you're doing today? Sure. No, I'd love to. Uh, so my name is Matt Krasnoff. I am a mortgage originator, a uh, licensed mortgage originator. I've been in the mortgage industry for almost 20 years. I came in in 2004. So I've seen the ups and downs, you know, doing this thing. Woo, woo. Uh, you know, I can tell you right now, everything is in cycles. And, and I'll talk more about that. But uh, it's uh, it's interesting time right now we'll talk more about that too but uh you know i feel like i've definitely grown in the career you know uh, not only grown in uh where i am you know with with the team i have but also just as a person grown you know from when i started and i'm hoping i can share some uh some wisdom even though i i'm not looking like getting off the gray here but i hope i can share some wisdom to you guys and and it helps and uh Again, Scott, thanks for giving me this this opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, thrilled to have you here today. And if I think about you know, 20 years in the mortgage industry, as you mentioned, you've been through a lot, lots of ups, lots of downs. Yeah. And I think to have that type of longevity, there's a component to it of being obviously one good at what you do, servicing your clients. And as you've built out a team, some leadership skills in there. A part of that being able to effectively communicate, right? You're com communicating not only to your internal team, your processors from a marketing perspective, but then also with your clients in doing so in a highly regulated industry where there's a lot going on, lots of details. And if you miss yeah. something, and I just know from experience, right? If you miss something along the way, it yeah. can just wreak havoc uh, on that process of buying a home and getting the mortgage closed. Yeah. So some strong communication skills must come into play there. And you know, as you think through your career, I'm sure you've learned from a lot of people, you've experienced a lot of things and just come into contact with some great people. You, know, As you think of somebody that is a strong communicator, right? You would say, you know, this person has really, really good communication skills. What's What's the image that comes to mind of that person? Well, that's a great question because you can say the right words or in some cases, which you've experienced, Scott, you can say sometimes not the right words, but you still get your point across. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think a great communicator has a way to transfer their feeling or their belief into another person or have that other person understand how that person feels. You know, uh, you can say the right words. You can say all the right words. But if I go, if I say all the right words and I keep everything monotoned, I don't know. You, you're going to be, I don't know what you're feeling. You know, you may not be feeling anything. You can, or you can say the right words and maybe not really have any background or, or, or feeling on what you're even saying or investment in what you're saying and, and have the right tone. But just uh, the other person's just, it's not, something's not clicking. So I think a great communicator 
has a lot of components. Okay. One, you got to have integrity. You got to believe, you got to believe in what you're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people are very good at picking up on things, you know, and, uh, and also, uh, um, it, it, and then being uh, transparent. And uh, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people will say that's that's who you are, you know, just be who you are as a person. And I think that really goes into communicate what you truly believe. And that goes in all components, not just what I do in this industry, but anything. It could be uh, uh, like, okay, regardless what your faith in faith is when you first come into contact with that with whoever you talk to you don't know anything about that faith but you feel something that attracts you or interests you to learn more mm -hmm. because of the, that person's ability to transfer their excitement belief or something that you feel that wants you to learn more and uh, I think a great communicator has a way of ha having the other person kind of share in the moment at what they're communicating, if that makes sense. Absolutely. But if I think of, of, of what you just said there, really communication, there's so much of it. And, and I really like the way that you said it. It's about transferring kind of how you're feeling about something to someone else. It's not just about the words, right? When you're communicating, an effective communicator they're thinking about at the end of this, whether it's the end of this email, the end of this presentation, the end of this conversation, what do I want this other person to think, feel, or do? And a tiny, tiny fraction of that is going to just be the words that you're saying. There's so much more that goes into it. You mentioned, how do you say it? Your tone, your volume, your inflection. Are you just monotone the whole time and people are going to be bored and tune out and not listen to you? Then there is, how do you look when you say it? Your gestures, are they aligned to what you're saying? And then how do you deliver it? Does this need to be a text message? Does this need to be a phone call, email, formal presentation? And then I think finally is the timing. When do I send this message? Am I sending it at five o'clock? Am I sending it at 10 p.m. and hoping that you know nobody sees it and it flies under the radar? Or is this a first thing, you know, 8 a.m. type of message where I'm going to get it to people when they're fresh, when they're going to really be able to think about and evaluate it? So as I think about communication, there's just this whole 360 view of it, starting with that small section of the actual words and then building all those layers upon it. You do, Scott, what you just said. I'm, I'm glad you're recording this because I'm going to take that to my next meeting. That was, that was awesome. Perfect. <laughs> I'll send that you the bill. Beautiful. I think you just wrote a book there. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, as you think about the workplace today, and it's changed, I'm sure a lot for you over the past 20 years being in the same industry. And then obviously it's changed quite a bit over the past several years if you think about the skills that really are needed to be successful in the workplace, whether it's specific to the mortgage industry or more broadly, or what you're looking for when you're bringing people onto the team, you know, what are some of those key communication skills that really are critical today? I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and, and I tell everybody I talk to when, when I'm meeting folks who are interested in coming uh, to work with me, or just curious about the industry in general, I, I'm transparent as can be, and I tell them the truth. I say, you can teach mortgage, but you can't teach the drive, you know? So mm -hmm. either you, and whatever whatever motivates that drive, um, sometimes it's just a love of what you want. It's a love of helping people, okay? Mortgages is affiliated with homeownership, which is a big part of people's lives, it excites me to be part of that. You know, I don't know if people remember me, but it's always rewarding when somebody reaches out to me five, six years after and says, Hey, you helped me. And I like, I remember you and I want to speak to you again. And to me, that's that, that, that right there is, is what's rewarding is to impact people's lives and to do something in a, in a positive manner um, you know, I always thought you only remember your your teachers and 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 your exes, but not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
No, I, 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 to me, it's very, very rewarding. And uh, uh, I would say anybody's coming into this, you know, what drives you? And, uh, you know, I, I would say back in the day, you had to be really good at math. And you still got to be good at math. But now mm -hmm. with all the applications we have, I mean, who stopped memorizing people's phone numbers? Now you just find it, right? Yep. Same thing with mortgages. The system does everything for you. But we need good communicators to communicate what we're seeing, you know? What we never want to happen is people don't utilize mortgage professionals and go straight to the system and try to figure out themselves because a mortgage professional is trained to communicate and explain the cause and effects and, and where this gets you and, and to have the vision to see beyond. Right now is a great example. This is the toughest market in my past almost 20 years that I have experienced with challenges. We have, and it's, it's obvious stuff, we have high interest rates right now. But because of my experience going through what I saw early 2022, I know now is a great time to buy a house. Even though rates are high, it's a great time to buy a house. And here's the reason why. The market is still a good market, but it's not as crazy as it once was. Um, and you probably remember this and heard this about how people were bidding large amounts over the purchase price, right? Yep. It's not like that anymore. So it's a great time to buy now because the purchase price is a right away number. You know, whatever you pay, it's gone. That's it. You know, you can't, there's mm -hmm. no take backers. So right now you can actually gain a property at the list price or negotiate, you know, a lot of the older elements of buying a house are coming into play. The only negative is the rates are high. But by now, because once you own the home, guess what you can do, Scott? What's that? You can refinance Yep. once the rates go down. Because what do you think is going to happen, Scott? Experiencing what we did early 2022, when the rates came down to around that 5% marker, because right now, you know, they're higher than that. Mm -hmm. But when the rates came down, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? Who's going to come out from everywhere? <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. So by now, refinance later. It, it, yeah. That's that's my belief. I'm hoping that makes sense. I would say, but there's beauty coming out of chaos too. Mm -hmm. I'll give you some examples. For the past time that I've been in mortgages, we've always had a common guideline, which is if you're self-employed, you had to be self-employed for two years. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar, that. Yeah. right? Right. Because of everything going on, you have the mortgage industry now wanting to create buyers that they didn't have before. So we're starting to see programs for folks that we used to say no to, that now we can say yes. Minimum requirement for self-employment, one year. That has come up. There's other programs out there. Why is this a great industry to be in? If you have... One, you got to believe in the American dream. You got to. If you haven't experienced the way home buying works or mortgages works in other countries, I urge you to talk to someone from another country. Okay. Much different. Much different. Did you have to put down 50%? <laughs> right. No. We have programs you can put as little as 0% down. And so it is uh, It is exciting to have the ability to help as many people as we can in this beautiful country. So for me, as I think through that, a big part of it comes down to the why. And if I think of whether it's hiring people, bringing people onto the team, you're kind of, you know, why are you interested in this industry, in this organization, whatever it is, and, and understanding their why. And for everyone, it's going to be a little bit different. Some people, it's purely financial. You know, I, I know that I can make a great living do, doing this. Other people, maybe it's uh, flexibility. For some people, it is just what you said. They, they really want to be able to help people through what can be a complicated process if you try to do it on your own. And then on the flip side of that, as you're working in this specific industry and working with clients, as you're able to have that conversation with them and understand Okay, you know, what's important to you? You know, why are you exploring 
working with a mortgage professional? What are you looking for in this process? So you can start to understand like they, I need somebody to help me navigate this. I have no idea what I'm doing, whatever. Some people may be more experienced with it. They just want to make sure to have the reassurances that things will go smoothly. So as you understand that, it helps you to best work with your clients. And then I think especially during these tumultuous times where you may have had clients that were, <clears throat> excuse me, ready to go. And then interest rates, what happened? They start going up, they start going up, they get nervous and they might pull out or back out. And that's when, when you have that conversation around, hey, well, tell me, tell me a little bit more about that. Why are you thinking of holding off, right? And then kind of going into the conversation that you just had around historically what happens with trends and rates and why it makes sense to do this or what's going to happen if rates go down, the property prices are going to go up and you're going to be in the same spot and just lost you know, a year or two. So I think as you're as you're looking for people and going through this, whatever industry you're hiring people, it really goes back to understanding that why. That's such a fundamental part of communication is the why behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Matt, if if I were to ask someone on your team, maybe uh, maybe your wife, someone close to you, you know, if they had to pinpoint your know, one key communication skill that has really helped you to get to where you are today. You're running a very successful team, being able to stay in this industry for 20 plus years, which I know is very challenging. Most people do not make it that long. Uh, they come in, they realize how hard it is to not only do the job, but to build and grow their network and their business base and to get referrals and all that stuff. So to have that type of longevity and success, there's something something going on there that you're doing right. So what would somebody tell me that, hey, this is the key thing that's really helped Matt from a communication perspective? Well, I think we pretty much, I, I think taking components of this conversation, as my wife says, <laughs> I authentically care, you know, and I care for many reasons. I care because within the community, I generally care about helping people within the community for one obvious reason. We're going to be shopping probably at the same grocery stores. And I don't want to worry about having a can of beans thrown at my head, right? Exactly. <laughs> Might happen for other reasons, but not the mortgage. Right, right. Um, obvious, you know, what you put out is what you get back. And I love how you summarized a lot of things. Can this industry financially take care of you? Absolutely. But that should be a byproduct. You should never lead with that. You lead with that. That's the same thing, in my opinion, as leading with words without a feeling behind it. You see what I mean? So you take care of people within the industry and the industry and the people will take care of you. That's it. Perfect. Very well said. And the key there that you hit on is being authentic and authentically caring and people feel that there's you can sense a difference when when they really do care whether it's a a real estate professional a mortgage professional yeah. a leader at your organization with the not only the words that they use like we talked about before how they deliver those words when they deliver it their tone volume pace inflection all of that stuff comes full circle and when you match your words with all those other things, you create that authenticity. The authenticity then leads to trust. And when you have trust, that's where the magic happens. And like I said, leads to. You're, you're you, touching you really my heart, man. You're touching my you heart. You helped right get now. me here. Uh, you helped me buy my home. I want you to help my brother, my friend, my neighbor yeah. now. So when you, yeah. when you create that match, you get the authenticity and then the trust, which, which will lead to the success. Matt, as you think of of your communication style, we've known each other for a few years now. Yeah, you, yeah. Have, you have a great communication style. Uh, I've always, every time we've connected, you know, you feel very comfortable. You you put people at ease, a great sense of likability. So you know, who's someone that has influenced that style from throughout your life, whether it's someone you've worked with, family, an inspirational figure? Who's somebody that's really helped you to be who you are today from a communications perspective? Oh, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to throw out the boring answer. You know, you probably hear this a lot, but my dad, my dad or the mayor, he really was the mayor. 
Um, wow. <laughs> but he was a but he was a jack of all trades in my eyes. He was a, a chiropractor, track coach, mayor. He, he he I mean he was so caring about communication in general. He uh, went for two months to live in Costa Rica. You know, submerge himself in Spanish language and learn how to communicate. So mm-hmm. he was really into communicating and 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 what and the thing that really amazed me is he was the same person. But he also learned how to communicate with 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 everyone. And I think communication is also, uh, um, you know, it's good to it's good to stay true to who you are. But like you said, there's different times of the day, and there's different there's there's different um, uh, times where people receive things better. And and I think it's important not only to expel the communication, but also receive, you know, and, 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 and feel the other person and feel where they are at. It's a good time right now, but who knows, there could be another time where the energy that I'm bringing right now may be too much for that person. Mm-hmm. And it's important to recognize that and to, you know, I could still talk like this and this is still me. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and that's just something I learned, um, you know, being around my dad and my dad was a, a big person that, um, really i think shaped and helped break me out of the mold growing up i did i didn't have a lot of friends <laughs> i mean it was a different time then i maybe had we didn't have like cell phones and stuff right. like that so you know i had about like a couple couple good best friends right mm-hmm. and, but i never really was uh hanging out with a mass amount of people so anytime i had an opportunity to be around a mass amount of people was always with my dad so I feel like that's really where I picked up a yeah. lot of the communication skills. Because without that, I'd probably be like this the whole time. <laughs> I can't. I can't envision that, but we'll yeah. see. <laughs> so though, no, that that's great to hear, and I always love the the varying answers that that I get to that question. And one of the things that you touched on does come up quite a bit, and it's this idea of. In essence, being yourself when you're communicating, but you know how can or how far out do I stretch that depending on the scenario? And I think that's up to everyone to decide for themselves. The thing that I talk about a lot is you, you need to ultimately stay true to who you are. You, if you are a you know quiet, calm, reserved person trying to mimic a you know keynote speaker that's you know running around the stage yelling and being very loud and boisterous probably not going to work for you and vice versa you always said you can stretch a little bit and as you mentioned depending on the audience depending on the time when you're communicating understanding that first thing in the morning if i'm coming at you you know <laughs> full tilt might be too much versus at lunchtime or vice versa so so much goes into effective communication when you think about this. Like I said, we talked about it a number of times. The words, how you deliver it, the vehicle that you use to deliver it, when you should deliver it, the timing around it. So seeing that and a big thing you hit on is the audience, right? Not only thinking about the audience, who's who's getting this message? Is it my team? Is it a client? Is it marketing that's going out into the world? Thinking about that, but then as you also think about your audience is... How are they going to react to it? And you know what should be the appropriate you know, message for this audience? Matt, yeah. as we are wrapping up here, and it's perfect timing because my neighbor's landscaping crew just showed up outside of my window. So I'm not sure if you can hear that or not. But well, I just want to let you know, I am receiving a lot here too. Like, <laughs> this is great. Like, the stuff you're teaching me right now, Scott, it's, it's pretty amazing. Well, I, I appreciate that. Absolutely. No, it, these are always fun, right? It's a great two-way street. It should, as all these conversations should be, right? I'm I'm always learning. That's, for me, a big principle is always pick something up, good, bad, or indifferent. From every interaction that I have with somebody, I'm, I'm trying to learn what to do, what not to do, earmarking something for later. Okay, I, that might, that strategy might come into play later. And one of the early guests on, on the show shared a great quote. I can't remember where it came from, but he said this, it's this idea of bloom where you are planted, right? If, if you're planted in a pot with great soil, lots of fertilizer, you get watered regularly. That's great. Soak it all up and take it. 
But if you are you know, growing up in a crack in the sidewalk, right, with no nutrients, there's still things that you can pull from. Like you see it all the time, the weeds and the grass coming up in the cracks of the sidewalk. They're doing that because right. they're just pulling in everything that they can. What little bit of exposure that they're getting, they're taking advantage of. So that for me, that's how I approach every interaction that I have with somebody is not only can I share and help them learn something, but what can I learn from them? Yeah, absolutely. Have you heard this saying before? Eat the fish, eat the fish, leave the bones. I haven't heard that one before. No, <laughs> that's a good you one. You don't have I like to take that. in everything, but maybe yep. there's things that you like. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> Matt, as we are wrapping up here, what piece of closing advice would you have for somebody around the importance of developing these skills that we talked about today? We've hit on a number of things and you know, this, the listeners of the show, quite honestly, range from very early on professionals, folks coming right out of school and into the workforce, senior level executives, entrepreneurs, everywhere in between. So if you think about communication skills and their, the important role that they play in life in general, what advice would you have for someone? Honestly, get out of the comfort zone. It doesn't have to be a massive hit completely out of your comfort zone, but little mm -hmm. by little, try to do things that maybe you know uh, you normally want to do. You know, if you're trying to excel and grow, uh, comfort is a good feeling, but comfort is not really associated with growing or excelling or going beyond where you're at right now. So, um, you know, uh, being uncomfortable is is, is really a way to grow yourself that's all i would say if, if you're comfortable right now that's good where where do you want to go what's your vision and uh vision leads to passion and all those things you know um no matter what you're doing no matter what you're communicating i hope you're passionate behind it passion is obviously leading to the belief in what you're communicating and uh and and your belief is coming from ultimately caring about people. So just express just express love. There you go. I, that's where I went. I was straight there. <laughs> uh, and then listen to Scott. Listen to Scott. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> getting out of your comfort zone is so important. And I think a lot of people fall victim to getting comfortable being comfortable because oh things are going good they're going they're going well i'm happy but at some point something's going to happen to disrupt that they once if you think of your your industry right 2008 something probably disrupted the mortgage industry a, a little bit right as you're a few years into it you know a few years ago what whatever's going on something's going to disrupt so you need to get comfortable being uncomfortable at work and at life, you know, before we started recording, you and I were talking just about like our you know, fitness journeys and things that we've been, been doing. And right. Just, just like that, you have to be uncomfortable. You're, you're working those muscles, you're breaking them down so they can build back up even stronger. Getting outside of your comfort zone will do that. You know, for me, it was this podcast. I was petrified to start this and to think about having conversations like this for 30 to 40 minutes with oftentimes complete strangers push me out of my comfort zone. And it's been fun to see the growth, right? If I go back and look at some of those early episodes and listen to them to now, just to be able to see that growth and how it's not only impacted the show and the success that the show has, but how it's just permeated through all the different aspects of my life and helped me just improve those skills at home, at work, with friends, all over the place. So absolutely get comfortable being uncomfortable. Love it. Love Matt, it. Matt, thank you so much for joining me. Really enjoyed the conversation. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a fantastic weekend. All right, you too. Thanks for having me. A special thanks again to my guest, Matt Krasnov, for sharing his wisdom on embracing discomfort and being prepared for the inevitable disruptions that challenge our comfort zones. Matt's emphasis on getting comfortable with being uncomfortable resonates deeply and serves as a powerful reminder for personal and professional growth. As we wrap up this episode, remember that the journey of improving communication skills is ongoing. Make sure to stay connected with Communicast by subscribing so you can benefit from future conversations with guests. If you found value in today's episode, I'd be grateful for your support. Leaving a rating or review is a fantastic way to let us know the impact this show has had on you. Thanks and have a great day.